the other thing about um, the descendants of Aaron being the priests was that there was to be one high priest. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was on the earth, there were two high priests. Right. Okay. Good point. So this is part of the problem of, okay, so we like the Maccabees in that they freed Israel from the Greeks. Problem is, then they set themselves up as the high priests. Now, I, I, from what I understand, they were of the tribe of Levi, but they were not of the tribe, the, the family or lineage of Aaron. So they were not priests, and they set themselves up as priests. So you had Caiaphas and Annas. Annas was the father, then Caiaphas, and actually five different sons and one uh, I think actually Caiaphas was the son-in-law, but there were five different sons of Annas and the son-in-law all served very short roles. Now, part of the reason was is that the Romans did not allow um, them to appoint a high priest for life. They saw that as a, I mean, it was a political role as well as a religious role. So the high priest, I mean, they had a lot of power and authority in, in the Sanhedrin uh, and in uh, governing really. But to control re re revolts and rebellions, the Romans said, you will serve, I don't know if it was a three or a five year term, but it was a very short term. And so this is why we see Caiaphas being the high priest at one point in time, Annas being the high priest, still kind of ruling from behind the scenes. So when Yeshua was on trial, not only did he go to Caiaphas, but he also went to Annas. And then... Um, the other one was, and this was well, this was interesting, when, when Shaul, when he gets arrested at the end of his life, or just before he gets arrested and, and sent off to Rome, he, um, he got, he's taken down to Jerusalem, and he meets up with the new high priest, and, and, he, and he basically talked back to the high priest. And somebody beside him slapped him on the face, and he's like, why did you slap me? And he says, you shouldn't talk about the high priest that way. And Paul says, you're right, I didn't know that he was the high priest. There's, there's a, um, okay, so first of all, Shaul was on the Sanhedrin, so he would have known all the, all the players, he would have known who was there. But it's also kind of a dig, because in saying that, he's saying, I didn't recognize, I didn't know that it had changed roles again. Because what had happened is they basically purchased the role of high priest. Uh, and this changed uh, hands a, a couple times, and which was not good. That's 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 another that's a good point with regards to the priesthood. But the other thing, okay, the way that the priesthood is supposed to be, is it's supposed to be of God's choosing. It's that simple. It's the classic question of uh, Tevia when he says, "God, why can't you go choose somebody else? Why are the Jews the chosen people? Why couldn't you go choose somebody else?" Well, it's because it's his choosing. In other words, the one chosen cannot be proud because they are chosen, because it is outside of their control. And the one not chosen cannot be arrogant or pride, prideful that they weren't chosen, nor, can they, nor should they wish to be chosen. It is simply the roles that we have to play. And God has different roles for different peoples, different roles for different and, and you know what it's by his choosing so for us it is to be humble because it's God's choosing it's God's way so that's the that's the whole deal about the you know God's choosing God's choice keeps us all humble Jew and Gentile so any other questions or thoughts yes there's a question back there Oh, speak loud. Ah, yeah, speak loud, but you just yell at the mic too. Right. Uh, so number 10, verse 10. Yep. Uh, so when I used to attend um, UPC Church, Pentecostal Church, yep. there's elder, they believe to have long hair. So every woman here hasn't got uh, long hair. She has basically has no authority. Uh, so they believe there's some women there, they grow their hair since a little, little child, yep. little girl. And they got big, massive beehives. Yeah. And if they let their hair down, it would flow. Behind. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. It's so long. It's amazing. Yeah. So and again, so they, yeah, yes, so that's they, right. They look at uncut hair, or they see women with cut hair. They that they have no authority mm -hmm. at all. 
that's how they view it. Right. And I told them, and I, we, this was a big debate within this congregation because of this. Yep. And that's just the way they are. Yeah, sure. Uh, we were, so when we were going to the, the, um, the Messianic congregation in San Antonio, Texas, we also were going to a Pentecostal holiness church. Uh, and they had a similar, similar idea that women could not cut their hair, could not dye their hair, could not wear makeup, could not wear jewelry. And there was a whole variety of other, other things that were a part of what they considered holy. Unfortunately, what happens is all of that holiness is external, not internal. And so they're trying to do outside things to show that they are holy before God and not inside things. Whereas when Yeshua came, he, he says, you know, your holiness should not be for others to see. So when Yeshua was talking about uh, fasting and prayer, uh, and he says, don't make a show about it because that's what the rabbis do. They just make a really big deal and they let everybody know that they're fasting and woe is me and they wail and weep and but rather do it in secret and your father who is in heaven shall see in secret. He says the same thing about prayer. He says don't just go to the corner of the street and just make all your big prayers and make sure that everybody can see that you're praying so to see how holy you are. Instead, go into the secret place and pray in secret where no one else can see you except for Adonai. And then what you do, in, you know, it says the Lord will reward you openly. So the problem with the, even those other congregations is that holiness, uh, even for men, for instance, you know, we were expected to wear a three-piece suit. That was the norm. And no beard. So you can imagine how I fit in. I dress this. I mean, I wear jeans and a shirt and a beard because I like it. And I, I like to, it, my, my work makes me wear slacks and stuff, but I take the tie off as soon as, I promise you. I these are the sort of clothes I like. So I showed up there. It was great. It was so funny because um, after, I, we, we, would have, we were at that congregation a year or so or more, and I was speaking in tongues, you know, by the, by the Holy Spirit. And they, they were really, I mean, they prayed for people. And they, people, I, look, they brought people to Jesus. So I can't say any, their methods might be a little different, but I tell you what, that there were several of our friends who were delivered from alcohol and delivered from drugs and they were set free and filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, it was, it was great and they, they loved the word. That was fine. The problem was the love for one another because I didn't fit in. Now, I was okay with that. I, I don't mind sticking out like a sore thumb. I, I kind of stick out, you know, you being a messianic rabbi, it kind of is part of the parcel to stick out. You, you know, you don't fit into the Jewish camp, you don't fit into the Christian camp, so I'm okay with that. But some friends of ours really got hurt in the process because they didn't receive the, they didn't, there was no love when, when there was a break of what was considered holiness, their daughter ran away. And um, there was a break and there was nothing that they could do, but there was no love from the congregation. In fact, the congregation all pulled back. Oh, I don't want my girls to be contaminated by your family. And that was literally the, the harshness that came. And so this is the warning. If your holiness is just external and it's not inside your heart, that's not right. It's because not right. The state, they believe in the more the apostolic movement. Mm -hmm. So anyone that's a charismatic movement, they mm -hmm. crown it. And, that, and we're talking, you're talking about baptism, right? Yeah. So they believe in Acts 2.38. Baptism in sure. Jesus' name. So yep. Matthew, Matthew baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They believe if anyone's baptized in that particular way, they're not saved. I know. I know. So many things. I know. So, but it becomes it becomes very legalistic, mm. right? And honestly, this is this is not. I mean, this is not uncommon. Yeshua was dealing with legalism in his time. He constantly was talking about this. That's why he gave so many parables about. He says it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you but what comes out of your mouth right see again he's saying it's not about just eating kosher it's about speaking kosher in other words if you eat kosher but there is filth and garbage coming out of your mouth to your to everybody around you that's not holiness and he talks about you know the mind and you know says if you, you say you have not committed adultery but I say if you commit adultery in your thoughts it's the same as if you committed adultery because he, he was dealing with what was on the inside. And so in all of these, it's about what's on the inside. So 
even in this case, and like I said, there was no custom or cultural custom, cultural norm for women to grow their hair extremely long. I mean, having a length of hair has been culturally normal for thousands of years. And for men to have short hair, it's the same thing. That's a cultural norm that is across cultures. I mean, you look every continent in the world, you'll see that as a norm. So there's, there's, a, there's an understanding, but in terms of having your hair down to, to the floor, it's just not practical. And there's no commandment that says that that's necessary. And again, it's taking something and stretching it and saying, well, if, if long hair is holy, then really long hair must be really holy. You're like, no, God didn't say that. We were mentioning this before. No, God didn't say that. No, Adonai didn't say that. He didn't say that. And so um, we have to be careful not to say what Adonai doesn't say. Moreover, what uh, Paul was saying applied only to when the woman was praying or prophesying, not to general living. Well, there you go. So maybe, but this was, this was a veil though. And it's not a cultural norm for us to even wear veils in our culture. So it, it, it doesn't really even apply to us from a, from a tradition or a custom standpoint. So this is where we, we do have to understand that when, when we read the scripture, yes, the principles absolutely apply. Holiness is something that we need to go for. And living righteously, living modestly, those are good things. But to try and say, well, modesty is this or that, you know, in, in many cultures, the shoulder must be covered. I mean, if you go to Israel, you have to cover the shoulder when you go into a holy site. What I always find funny, and this is, this is the classic, you go into the Jewish holy sites, you have to cover your head. You have to wear a kippah, or as a man. But if you go into the Christian holy sites, you have to uncover it. So you're constantly, you know, cover it up here, uncover it here. And then you go to the Muslim sites, they give you a shawl. Because you've got to, or, or a dress, if you're, because if you can't have shorts, even as a guy, you can't, can't show the legs. So you, you, you know, and it's different cultures have different expectations of what modesty looks like. And so again, holiness is, is living right before God, but it has to be an internal thing. It can't just be on the outside. I have a question about verse 7. Okay. So it's the justification of why a man shouldn't cover his head and a woman should be veiled. Mm -hmm. Let's use the term you talk. But it says that the man is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. Mm -hmm. But we're also created in the image of ah, God. Yes. So why is that not included and can we not show the glory of the lord too absolutely so you're right you, you good 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 see now it's important not to add words and take them away so you noticed that it says that the man is the image and glory of god but the woman is just the glory of man she's not the image of man mm -hmm. because Man and woman were made in the image of God. And in Genesis it says, in the image, and then it, in Genesis it says it one way, man and woman were created in the image of God. In the image of God, he created them. Okay? So it says it both ways, just in case you missed it the first time. So you're right. Men and women are created in the image of God. Woman is not created in the image of men. I am so thankful for that. <laughs> I am so thankful that God did not make you look like me. <laughs> honestly. I mean, honestly. You know, these are things that we can be thankful for. But you're right. There's this, this concept of glory. Um, the glory, glory is... Um, how do you even explain glory? The radiance. The glory includes beauty. It includes radiance. It includes majesty or magnificent. It, it, it even includes some of the, you know, when we talked about the face of Moses glistening. Mm -hmm. So there's this shining beauty. And it is, yes, Adam was created and then, and then, uh, Adonai said it's not good for man to be alone. We'll create one in, you know, in his image, in his image right? Also in Adonai's, but took, took from the side. And it's also important that, that it was from a rib. So that means, you know, as a man, it was not from the head, so a woman is not above man. It was not from the foot, so man is not above woman. 
but it was from the side. There's this, when it, when it talks about that the woman is a help meet, the, 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 uh, the concept is the same as the paraclete, which was uh, in Greek times, soldiers would fight in twos. You'd have somebody watching your six. We still do that today. Now we just, you, we have four, but you, you have somebody watching the back and someone watching the front. And in marriage, that's, that's how we work together. We complement each other and work together. So it is true that, look, honestly, women are way more beautiful than men. That's just the truth. And, and you know, that, uh, there's, it's just, as part of, when you look at the glory, I would say women are the pinnacle of creation. Because if you look at how creation was created, God gets more and more majestic as he goes on. Okay? And the last to be created, the pinnacle of creation is woman. And so I see that there are so many aspects of God's nature, you know, where it, just the love and the tenderness and even when it talks about um, just the Shekinah of the Lord, the, the, which is an, the, the, the glory, the, the glory cloud, it's a, it's, there's a feminine, it's a, it's a feminine word. Shekinah, is that Shekinah? Is that correct? And uh, I was warned that I, uh, I, if, I, if I'm not careful, I'll mispronounce it because it means my neighbor's wife, Shekinah, is that right? It's similar, yeah. Yeah, it's similar. <laughs> so I have to be careful how I pronounce it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Shekinah. The neighbor is Shekinah. Shekinah. And the glory yeah. is Shekinah. 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 Yeah. So, the, but it's, it's, a fem, it's got a feminine... Uh, Ending, yeah. Oh, sorry. Another question. Last question. So, we'll... No, so the question is oh, okay. just adding to what oh, yeah. uh, she asked. I think that when um, a man does really well and he's honorable and upright and whatever, he brings glory to God. And then, you know, if you see a woman that looks totally downtrodden and miserable, you're going to say, Oh my goodness, you know, what kind of husband has she got? But she looks that way. But if she looks good, then it's like, oh, her husband must treat her well. So in that sense, it also brings glory to the husband because look how well he's looking after his wife. In the same way as somebody who's doing well as a, a, a believer, um, you know, if you're really just being a, a pathetic believer, you know, people say, well, what kind of God do you serve? You know, but if you're doing well and really... Yeah, living, yeah. living life, like he says, then you're going to be bringing glory to God as well. That's great. You know, it's like when the father says to his daughter when she goes out, you know, now she says, remember whose child you are, you know? Yeah, what you're going to do out there, reflects on me. Father. That's right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. 